For you, getting a case of food poisoning or even having an allergic reaction is a minor inconvenience. For the cells in your body, it's an apocalyptic event. Hataraku Saibo, Cells at Work, returns for another fantastic dose of episodes. I'm going to be talking about two episodes today because last week I did not have an opportunity to watch this episode. I just had the chance to sit down and watch both of these, and it continues to be more of what I love from this show. It's action-packed, it's funny, and most importantly, it's educational. This show actually tricks me into learning so much about the human body that honestly, I think it's something that everyone needs to see. Believe it or not, after watching a couple of these episodes, there were a lot of things that I understood that I never understood before in some of my casual conversations that I've had with people over the last couple of weeks. It's made me appreciate this show because I'm learning something, not just watching some mindless entertainment. That's not to say that all anime is mindless entertainment, mind you, but this series right here is unlike anything that I've ever seen before. I will say, however, that one of the biggest drawbacks of Cells at Work is its constant need to pause things and explain information. While it is great that it allows you to understand it, it does manage to kill the pacing of some of the otherwise more really fun scenes. But both of these episodes right here really excelled in what they were actually trying to do, which again is personify the crazy events that go on in your body and what your body does to fight back against ailments, viruses, bacteria, etc. The first episode that I'm going to be talking about one involves food poisoning, something that I think that we've all gone through before, which mostly just results in you having to go to the bathroom non-stop. Here it is shown like a giant monster invasion. This episode is just filled to the brim with some of the coolest freaking virus monsters that I've actually seen from the series. And most of this episode actually focuses on a cell, which is known as the eosinophil, which is a killer T cell. And like a lot of the other ones, they excel in actually destroying uh, things that go inside of the body. The thing is that eosinophil is a uh, being which is very, very specific in what it actually is supposed to do. It's only supposed to kill parasites, though. so throughout most of the episode, it's actually kind of useless, despite the fact that its main role is to kill things, but it's very specific in that role. But they have fun with this, in the fact that they poke fun at this girl by calling her a coward and everything. It's ridiculous, it's melodramatic, and really over the top. The eosinophil herself has a really fun design, wearing like a pink tracksuit and hat, and having some like giant lance weapon which she uses to take out her enemies, but again, She's mostly useless throughout the entire episode as she has to stick to her role. I love that they never break from that in the series either. Like, everybody has a role to play in the series, and they're always sticking to it the entire time. It truly is a demonstration of the things that go on in your body. They don't move away from that. And in that sense... Cells at Work might not be everyone's cup of tea if you're expecting a story with arcs and character development. I honestly don't think this is the anime series that's actually going to end up giving that to you, especially because every episode almost seems to be a self-contained story. I mean, this episode does of course end with this massive parasite coming in from the walls of the inner stomach, which was coming in from like this fish that someone ate, and it's up to Eosinophil to take it out in a massive glory God of War style fashion. And it's really awesome, but it sort of just ends there, and that's kind of the end of that story. Bringing us to the next episode, the one that I actually watched today, which was probably maybe my favorite episode of the entire series. It shows what happens when someone gets a bad case of allergies, when they get pollen inside of their body and ingest it. And the chain reaction of events that goes off throughout this entire episode are great. Especially how the episode begins, where it looks like there is a meteor which is actually about to crash inside of the human body. And this is actually just a giant piece of cedar pollen, which inside of it contains this massive pollen creature, which is just a giant blob of gooeyness, and it just goes around inconveniencing everyone, crashing into buildings, destroying things, and crushing everything in its sight, and it's up to the cells to actually fight back, with the white blood cells coming in and taking them out, and even the return of the B cell who uses his antibodies, which I thought was really great. He just comes in like freaking John Matrix, just destroying everything with his massive gun. Like I said earlier, there's this chain reaction of events that goes on in this episode where things continue to escalate, and it's also done with the introduction of another new character who goes by the name of Memory Cell, who is portrayed as this like really paranoid character because he's seen a lot of crazy shit, man, and he knows that the apocalypse is coming, and that this 
is basically the beginner of it. Like, seeing that, like, giant, like, cedar pollen creature, he's like, this is the harbinger of our destruction. That alone is really, really funny when you really think about it. Uh, but they also introduced this other character that we've technically already seen before, the Fat Cell, whose job is to release histamines inside of the body, which uh, sort of, like, flush everything out and even bring in more white blood cells to take care of stuff. But whenever that happens, it sets off another chain reaction of events where you finally start to fall suscept to this uh, pollen by your nose dripping, your eyes getting all watery, sneezing continuously, which fires missiles all over the place in this world for some reason, and of course causing the inner linings of your nose to basically enlarge and destroy everything around it. This is literally a giant catastrophic event which is happening every single time, and your body has to deal with it. A lot of comparisons of this series have been made to Osmosis Jones, and another one of those is definitely going to be noted in this episode, because it all ends when suddenly Red Blood Cell appears with this massive black ball, which is actually a pill, a steroid, that this human body has actually taken to fight back against this allergic infection. And when this pill opens up, this hilarious, ridiculous, over-the-top robot steps out, and then proceeds to destroy everything. That's its job. Anything in the immediate area is going to be destroyed. Cells, allergy infections, viruses, everything. It's how they actually fight back. And they just sort of accept this destruction. That's what I think is funny. If this were any other show and they tried to inject an actual story in it, they might actually try to stop this pill, but they know that that's just its job and their only choice really is to run away until it completes that. And when it finally does, a little flag comes out of its face thanking everyone for their patronage, and the pill has saved the day. So what's the rundown on both of these episodes of Cells at Work? Again, the series completely excels at showing off action, humor, and also just a ton of educational value. This is a show that medical students, I think, are just going to love, and I pray that there's going to be a very brave professor out there who decides to show this or introduce it to his students, because it really does actually teach you a surprising amount about the human body. But again, the strengths of the series are how they actually portray these events, and every episode gets progressively more insane. Watching that allergy infection in the uh, the pollen episode at the end with the missiles flying all over the place and all of this histamine fluid just exploding everywhere and these giant pollen creatures taking over things like a giant massive alien invasion, it's just a sight to behold. And the way that it's built up throughout the episode is the best part because Memory T-Cell knows that it's constantly going to get worse and worse and worse. And it does build up to that event. But luckily, the pill comes in and murders everything in sight like friggin' Mega Man. The design of the pill was also really awesome. It kind of looked like something that maybe a Kara Toriyama would have designed. And the fact that it was a robot, too, just made it really unique for the series. Even though everything is educational and realistic in a sense, everything is actually told in a way that makes it really relatable to the viewer. Thus, you're actually going to learn a lot more as you're watching it. Again, like I said, I don't like the fact that there are a lot of interruptions to actually explain things, but if we didn't have those, I, I wouldn't learn as much, to be perfectly honest. You kind of have to put yourself in a different mindset while watching Cells at Work, and again, I think that's one of the biggest strengths about this show. It's educational, it's fun, and it's also got some really great style and some great character designs. I know there's got to be so many people who are going to want to cosplay as all of these characters at their next convention. What more can I say? It was another super fun, action-packed, and educational adventure that is Cells at Work. I'm giving this episode a 5 out of 5. I'd love to hear all your thoughts about them. You can tell me in the comments section below and what you guys hope to see from the rest of Cells at Work. Thank you guys for watching this review. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay down now, baby.